Hello folks, I'm your host Morgan Harris and welcome to General Wisdom, where we speak with WNL alumni about where they live, what they do, and the journeys that got them there. And today on the program, we have Samantha Copping, who's currently a grad student uh, in philosophy of religion at UC Santa Barbara. How are you doing, Samantha? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Spring has finally sprung in Lexington, and uh, you know what that's like. <laughs> Allergies? <laughs> yes, a lot of sniffles. <laughs> so, uh, as we just mentioned, you are currently enrolled in grad school for philosophy yes. of religion at uh, UCSB. Uh, mm -hmm. But after graduating, you worked as a teacher for a little bit, and then as mm -hmm. a flight attendant. Yes. So, if, could you, if you could connect the dots for us, uh, like what led you to these jobs, what did you learn from them, mm -hmm. and now what has brought you to grad school? Okay, so I think to explain where I am now, there it requires a little bit of backing up. And like a lot of WNL students, I came into WNL being a very motivated, driven person. You know, even you know, just to get to to WNL, you have to you know split your time and take the SAT and, you know, write great essays. And um, I was very much always thinking about what the next step is. And for me, that next step after college was always that I was going to go off to law school and then I was going to someday end up as a judge. So in the back of my mind, that was always the next step. Um, and by the time I was a senior, I had taken the LSAT, I had written my personal statement, um, had secured my letters of recommendation and was a about to hit submit um, to all my, my law school applications. And one day I was was driving home from the Rockbridge County Pie Festival, which if you haven't been, you totally should. It's amazing. Um, and enjoying, you know, the beauty of the, the Blue Ridge Mountains and listening to the Avid Brothers and had just this moment of realization that I didn't actually want to be a lawyer um, and realized that I was just using law school as a crutch to, you know, answer my parents' friends when everyone, you know, at a cocktail party is like, so what are you going to do with that humanities degree? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was great in that it gave me an answer and a, like a way to feel like I knew what I was going to do next and how I was going to make money and feed myself. And I had this you know, just liberating moment of realizing that that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and I didn't really know exactly what that next step was, but... I realized that I had completely fallen in love with this philosophy of religion stuff, which, you know, I never would have imagined. It's not what I went into college to study. I sort of stumbled upon it and, you know, wasn't quite ready to, to commit to graduate school, but suddenly realized that I had no idea what my life was going to look like after the age of 22, which mm -hmm. is liberating and terrifying. Um, so I, you know, I did. I kind of bounced around a little bit, and I think... I was afraid, and if I had spoken to myself at 21, I would have been afraid that there was something, you know, shameful or stagnant about not being on the, the you know, conveyor belt of, of success in life. And instead, I got to explore, I got to travel, I got to learn so much more about myself, um, and have really been able to then approach going into graduate school with, with certainty. Um, I found that particularly while I was a flight attendant, you know, I had everything in my life that should be making me happy. Um, you know, I got to, I could see the world, I got to eat food, I got to meet new people, and I had so much time to, to read books and just found that the questions that had been, you know, at the back of my mind back when I was an, an undergraduate, I wasn't done with them and I was still spending so much of my free time thinking about them and, you know, realized that that was an itch that needed to be scratched, and if I didn't go to graduate school, I wouldn't, um, you know, wouldn't ever really be happy. So it was great. It gave me it gave me the certainty to know that this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. That's great. So so what is grad school life like now that you're there? <laughs> um. Well, I think one of the biggest differences from from an undergraduate experience is that there's so much downtime and it is so self-directed whereas instead of having a class you know Monday Wednesday Friday you have seminars once a week generally for a, a longer period of time about three hours but the rest of the time you are on your own um, and in charge of doing your own research and doing your own readings my first term here I only had class on Monday and Tuesday which meant that the rest of the week 
I just had, you know, I had a, a stack of books this tall every week, but I was just in charge of, you know, reading those and, and thinking about them and synthesizing the information on my own. So lots of self-directed time. Um, I find that I have to impose a schedule on myself artificially and just make myself say that this is the time that we wake up, this is when we get coffee, you know, this is when we go to the gym. Um, otherwise, it's very easy to just stay curled up in, in bed all day and realize that it's 4 p.m. and you have... 300 pages yet to get to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see that uh, definitely being uh, an, an issue for me if <laughs> I had that, that kind of freedom. Uh -huh. Making your own schedule, that's mm -hmm. crucial. Um, so, so do you have any advice for current students or, or recent alumni who are thinking that, that they might want to attend grad school? Like, What should they be thinking about or doing as they're preparing? Yes, okay. So two things. First is a sort of general advice for everyone who is currently at WNL. Go stop by your professor's office hours. And if you just happen to be walking by and their door is open and it's not office hours, go say hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, one of the, the incredible things about WNL that I think sometimes gets overlooked is how accessible the professors are. Um, and they wouldn't be teaching at a small liberal arts college with I had some fantastic classes of three to five people. Um, you know, the professors are there, they're world class, but they're there because they care about teaching and mentoring undergraduates. Um, so I think sometimes people will end up only going to their off, you know, professor's office hours if you know they got a bad grade and want to talk about it. But some of my best college memories were just, you know, I'm I happen to be walking past my advisor's office, the door is open, said hello. And they, you know, oh, you got to check out this thing that I'm working on, or look at this clip from this opera that I'm watching, <laughs> and you know, really being able to build a, um, you know, like a friendship, a, um, and a relationship that is a little bit deeper than just what's, you know, what can be built right there in class when you have a very structured, you know, conversation, and that no matter what you do in life, anytime you, you know, you need a rec letter of recommendation, people can tell that. There is a difference between, you know, a professor that knows you intimately and, you know, knows your hopes, dreams, fears, strengths, weaknesses, and someone that, you know, had you in a class that you got an A on. Um, right. And that, right. Will, that will help you so much in life, and we, we have that opportunity at, at WNL. Um, and the people that wrote all of my letters of recommendation are fabulous people that I've tried to come back at least once a year to go and, to go and meet with. Um, so, so that is wonderful. It also means that if they know you know you that well, they will be fabulous resources when it comes to finding out, you know, would I like graduate school? Where should I go for graduate school? Because it is, it's a terrifying process and it's it's very different than applying for college. So a few people have done it, then it's great to have those resources. And then, you know, the other thing, I don't think that it necessarily has to be for everyone, but I would definitely recommend taking time off before making this this commitment. And I think a lot of people that I know jumped into graduate school because they didn't know what else to do. Mm. And it seemed like a, well, I'm, you know, I don't really know what I want to do for a job or I'm not quite ready to, you know, leave this wonderful cocoon that I have built around <laughs> myself at, you know, at Washington and Lee and end up being miserable. And, you know, it is it is very stressful and overwhelming but you know it's not something that I think you can you can take lightly and I know that you know those days when it's four in the morning and I haven't slept and I still have 40 pages to write that I've had this like feeling of oh my gosh I am so lucky like I am getting paid by the state of California <laughs> to be stressed out you know, <laughs> reading and writing and thinking about philosophy and if I didn't have that that sort of joy and know that this is exactly what I wanted to be doing, you know, it could, it can get pretty dark. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that doing the whole flight attendant thing before this was, uh, I mean, it, I don't know. It just feels to me like one of the perfect things to do in the limbo time between undergrad and and, and grad school. I mean, get a lot yes. of travel in. Would you be able to talk a little bit more about that little yeah. space? No, it's actually funny that you should say that because it was while I was flood attending that I had the moment when I realized that, like, yes, this is what I want to do. And 
And I think one of the things that was very different about being a flight attendant as compared to, to a lot of other career paths is that there was no take-home work. Um, and when I was a teacher, you know, I got out of school at 2.30, but between grading and lesson planning and parent-teacher conferences and, you know, cutting out construction paper stars, <laughs> you know, I normally didn't finish my work until 9 o'clock at night. Right. Um, but as a flight attendant, you know, it was a great job, but it also, you know, it was like very concrete, small things where I could solve problems, help people be of service, be useful, and then, you know, I would walk off the plane and be done. Um, which, like you said, gave me so much free time to kind of explore and keep reading and asking questions. And it was one night I was on my way to Amsterdam, um, and I had just finished working first class, which is I love those long flights because once everyone has had their, you know, their fancy dinner service and finished dessert, most people get to sleep, and we're not allowed to get to sleep. But there's not really anything to do, <laughs> so you just kind of get to just sit up and look out the window at the stars, eat the leftover cheese, which is fantastic, <laughs> <laughs> drink a nice big thermos of coffee to keep yourself awake. And I actually happen to be to be reading a book that is by my now advisor and just, you know, had this, this moment looking at the stars. So it was just so captivating. And it was realizing that, yes, these are the questions that I want to be asking. Um, you know, I'm not done thinking about this. I need to go to grad school. And that really triggered me to kind of start the process of, you know, studying for the GRE, talking to my advise, you know, my old advisors and um, but yeah, the, that is great to have. Just giving yourself time is wonderful because, you know, from the time that, that I was a freshman in high school, I was always busy and always working on that, that next step and that next task and, you know, summer jobs, internships, classes, extracurriculars, and there really wasn't much space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So important. So on that note, um, what what key experiences you know while while at WNL mm -hmm. either academic or otherwise helps prepare you for what you have faced after graduating? I think WNL does a fantastic job, and I didn't realize this until you know I just took it for granted until I started interacting with other you know twenty two year olds. Does a fantastic job of preparing us both inside and outside the classroom with soft skills. Um, so I certainly you know in the classroom learned a lot of content, but I also learned how to speak in public, how to interact with superiors, how to make small talk. Um, and that's just one of the benefits of having this itty bitty tiny classes where I was forced to speak up and you know formulate my opinion on things. Um, being part of the Greek system, you know, gave me the opportunity to constantly meet new people and constantly learn how to interact with people that I might not have had much you know, in common with, with on paper. And, and those are skills that no matter what career path you are taking are going to be useful. Um, you know, and just being able to carry on a conversation with an adult, you know, granted I'm an adult, but when you're 22 speaking to a, you know, 65-year-old superior, that's a very big difference. <laughs> and I said, it's seeing that there are other people that don't know how to do that. Um, and WNL does a you know a great job. You're always interacting with you know professors and community members and and really have the ability to do that. Yeah, so. yeah, that's great. Uh, now that you're you know on the other coast, what do you miss about uh, Lexington? So much. Um, I guess the first thing that comes comes to mind is is bluegrass black <laughs> bluegrass breakfast on Wednesday mornings, um, and I remember. You know, 8 a.m. seemed so early when I was 19, and now it's like, man, sleeping into eight, you know, until 8 and then getting to go listen to, to the live bluegrass and drink coffee and look over my, my notes for class. There's also, I think, just the general experience of being in a community like that. You know, Lexington is, is very small and very intimate, and you don't have to try very hard to really get plugged into the community um, as a you know a WNL student, whether it be through Big Brothers Big Sisters, um, through just you know putting out a, a personal ad, willing you know saying that you're willing to babysit our nanny. Um, you know I mentioned the the pie festival earlier. 
um, there are just so many great opportunities to, to feel like a part of a community. And as someone who spent my years since college, never, you know, I moved every six months and especially as the flight attendant just never had a sense of being in one place for, <laughs> for more than a few days at a time. And it's lovely to have a sense of community. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm loving living here as a dedicated, you know, community member. But I'm wondering how, so how does um, Santa Barbara as a community, like what's, what what's that like? I mean, you've you've only been there for a little bit, but yeah, no, I mean, well, the weather is fantastic. Um, those of you considering graduate school, I would just like to let you know that our school is on the beach. I can leave class and be in the water in approximately three minutes, wow. <laughs> <laughs> which is something that Lexington does not have. But I think one of the things that I'm finding is very different and really making me appreciate WNL versus a, a large state school is that from the moment that you step on WNL's campus, you are plugged in with your advisor. Um, and to be honest with you, I never would have been a religion major if it hadn't been for the advisor that I was assigned during pre-orientation week. Mm. Um, Kevin Crotty over in the Cossacks department too, you know, Whereas at a big state school, there's the sense of, you know, your, your first two years, you're in 300, 500 person classes and really don't have any interaction with, you know, your big name professor. You know, I have this, you know, world leading expert on Homer that my first day in Lexington was taking me out to dinner, you know, um, and well before helping me sign up for classes was getting to know me as a person and what my interests were and, you know, knows about my family and my interests and in, in that side of the classroom and, he was able to say, you know, I thought that I, I, I thought that I was going to be a history major. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was able to, you know, after meeting me, interacting with me, say, you know, Samantha, I really think that you would get along well with Alex Brown over in religion. And I think that, you know, you're interested in, you know, humanity or people. And I forget what exact phrase he said, but would, would lend itself to being a religion major. And... I think, I didn't even know that religion was something that you could study, <laughs> but I ended up signing up for, for two classes that first term, and just my mind was blown. Um, and, you know, it clearly ended up changing the course of my life, and I am now a, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm going to spend the rest of my life studying, and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't gone to WNL and if I hadn't had an advisor that, that knew enough about me as a person. Yeah, wow, that's that is a great great story, great <laughs> testimony to this small liberal arts experience. Uh -huh. So you mentioned you plan to do this for the rest of your life. Yes. Um, I, I imagine a lot of people, you know, go to grad school to then be you know a professor uh -huh. and, and that kind of subject. Do you, is that what you you do? You plan on going down the sort of academic route or what? Yes, you know, I. You know, if, if all of my stars align, I would absolutely love to, to continue as an academic, and, you know, that is the goal. However, I do realize that, you know, academia is, is a very, very, <laughs> um, you know, dog-eat-dog -dog world, and, you know, tenure-track positions are not very plentiful, and if I'm fortunate enough to receive one, it, it might involve moving to rural Idaho. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which which I am all in favor of, but I think that's one of those other things that um, was so great about me making time, you know, taking time off beforehand was that I came in, you know, so a lot of people will give you the advice if you're thinking about grad school that because it is so competitive that you should only be doing it if it is the only thing you can do, and if you can do something else and be happy, you know, as a as a teacher, as a you know business person, that you should do that instead, and this is a last resort. Um, and I think that advice is wrong. And you should come to grad school like, you know, with a sense of releasement towards it or freedom. And I think that, you know, working, doing other things made me realize that, you know, even if I don't get a job, um, after, you know, an academic job, that I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to starve. I can feed myself. I can, you know, there are other things in life that I can do. Um, and I made this as a free choice, uh, something that I want to do. And I'm going to, you know, give it my all and take it as far as I possibly can. Um, 
and that if things don't, you know, work out for me, that I'm going to be okay, and will still be able to, you know, not think of these, you know, five to ten years of my life as wasted time, but as a, a gift that I was given, where, you know, I had the ability to do nothing all day, but but read and write, which is extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that well well put. Um... Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So that'll do it for this episode of General Wisdom. Thank you for watching. And if you have any feedback or if you would like to be a guest on the program, please just see the links at the bottom of the description of the video. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.